Hi, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm on the sidelines of the Law, Economics and Policy Conference here at the Flame University in Pune, and I'm in conversation with Ila Patnaik, the Chief Econo Economist at the Aditya Birla Group. Thank you so much, Ila, for taking the time. Um, just want to understand uh, how you see the current context uh, here, here in India uh, from an economic standpoint, uh, especially if you're talking about a slowdown in growth in the US, in Europe. Uh, where do we stand right now? Uh, what is your expectation in terms of growth, in terms of the inflation trajectory? And then we'll move into monetary policy. See, uh, the world is slowing down. So both US and Europe are slowing down. And indeed, so is China. So we've ha we are today facing a world where there are many implications of this slowdown for us. So this slowdown means uh, our exports will slow down. The slowdown also means that China may start exporting more to us. Mm. Uh, so looking at India, it has, as of now, we are seeing high growth compared to all these other economies that are slowing down. We're seeing growth roughly, I would just say roughly at 6% or above that because those estimates are varying and they keep getting revised mm. downwards also. So 6 to 7% growth is what we are looking at in India. Also, inflation in India is perhaps for the first time that I have uh, seen it for many, many years, lower than inflation, say, in the US or UK. Yeah. And uh, I think that's thanks to the uh, sort of conservative policies that we followed, particularly on fiscal, yeah. where we did not do printing money and we did not do the kind of fiscal expansion that some of these other countries did. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, reasonably good growth and reasonably, even though inflation is above our target, but it is still below uh, that of some of the other countries. So a part of, I think, the problem that not just the Reserve Bank of India, but of course, central banks around the world have had to deal with is understanding what the contribution of inflation has been, right? Uh, how much is supply side? How much is demand side? Because of the issues that you saw with the semiconductor crisis, with supply chain disruptions, etc., and therefore, how to formulate policy? We are still in an interest rising scenario. Where do you see policy rates culminating, and how do you think monetary policy will move from this point here in India? So, I India is not isolated from the rest of the world. So, let me not jump to India because the context is US. Okay. And uh, in the US, supply side inflation uh, did happen. Of course, there were disruptions. We all understand that. But beyond that, there was a lot of demand uh, increase, mm -hmm. and especially because of fiscal transfers, which is what has got inflation entrenched. Mm -hmm. Now, given that the US Fed has to increase rates, some expect the rates to go up to even 5%. So, 4.75 to 5, so you know, in that uh, 20.25 band that they have. And if that happens, then considering that uh, the Reserve Bank of India worries a lot about the rupee and it does keep trying to peg the rupee to the US dollar, it might feel under pressure to hike rates here as well. So there are two reasons to hike rates. Mm -hmm. One is domestic inflation. And the second is U.S. rate hikes so that, uh, you know, there's no adverse pressure uh, on the rupee. So for those two reasons, I see rates going up a little, but maybe not as much as they would uh, in terms of the delta uh, in the U.S. Because here our inflation is not that, uh, yeah, not that much above the target as theirs is. So their inflation above their 2% target is, you know, far beyond hours beyond our 4% target. So I do see rates going up, but not that much. So maybe, you know, a 25 or a 35 basis point increase and then uh, keeping it steady for some time. Uh, the last uh, question, of course, relates again to the US uh, and uh, what their reaction, the Fed's reaction to a possible recession there could be. Uh, if they turn, uh, monetary policy in reaction to a, a, a recession and they start easing again. Uh, do you first of all anticipate that they could do that? Uh, I really don't see that happening. I don't see that happening because they've already uh, made the mistake of being behind the curve once. Mm -hmm. 
that they did not, uh, they said that inflation was transitory mm -hmm. and that they were worried that uh, the economy may slow down due to COVID and therefore they were behind the curve and they did not hike rates as uh, rapidly as they should have and they didn't begin hiking rates uh, soon enough. Mm -hmm. And now that the worry is that inflation may get entrenched. Uh, I think uh, Powell has continuously been saying that we want to put inflation and get our inflation under control and put the inflation target as our priority mm -hmm. rather than anything else. So, you know, that message is going out that they want to bring inflation under uh, control. So I would think that even if they don't go down to two, but unless they come down to at least three, they are not going to start easing uh, rates. They are not going to turn towards uh, the economy and the slowdown because their mandate is more of inflation control, which they've been they've been behind the curve. So, so then from that perspective, if interest rates are likely to stay elevated, they will likely stay elevated here in India as well. Um, the growth and uh, where does it come from? So government uh, spending has been a large part of the growth driver in the recent past or over the last couple of financial years in particular. Uh, when do you see private coming in? Do you see private coming in and credit growth? How does that move? Yeah, so if you look at uh, more recent information, private credit has picked up mm. and uh, investment is also showing some signs of picking up. Uh, so there is a domestic growth story, certainly. On the export front, we may see a little bit of a, uh, yeah, because the world, if the world slows down, then the investment that happens for exports or the demand, uh, delta in demand that comes from exports will be slower. But to a large extent, you know, with 60-70% of us uh, looking uh, towards the domestic economy, we do see a pickup there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ila, for taking the time. Pleasure speaking with you.